Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is a rice news analyst, Emmanuel Ifene. Great Malabite, good to have you right inside the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Ruben. This is yeah, this is having, uh, I have the studio there. This is studio one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks for do, making me laugh. Yeah, it's good to see that you are smiling, but this is very horrendous. Heart rendering. And um, I don't think it will be out of place to call on Sheikh Gumi, who is an avid watcher of this station, to please use his connection with these bandits to get these children out. Mm. We we'll look at the papers today. Let's start with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of records. Lead story, Obasanjo, bad leadership has turned Nigeria to a land of Bitterness, sadness. Insecurity does not make Nigeria fail state, insists federal government. Presidency, foreign magazines' opinion on Nigeria distorted, unfair. Yes, when former President Olu Shegun Obasanjo writes, as he usually does with his famous letters, or when he speaks, of course, it grabs the headline because. Um, if I call him conscience of the nations, those who don't like him will say, no, it cannot be the conscience because it was part of the problem. But give it to him. Pres former President Lucia Gwambasanjo is a statesman any day, and his view on the situation in the country cannot be uh, better put. That indeed, there's so much bitterness and sadness in the land. Look at these little kids. Government has failed them, even at their young age. And um, the situation in the country now, life is becoming short. It's brutish, Ruben, you will agree? Nasty, short, and brutish. Hobbs. Thomas Hobbs, yes. in Leviathan. So, going back to the state of nature, where the federal government is insisting that the, the level of insecurity does not mean Nigeria is a failed state. But analysts, security analysts, will tell you that the situation, we are gravitating. We are gravitating towards a failed state. But let me just look at another story on the front page of this day before we move on to other newspapers. Defense headquarters are fears of mass reti retirement. I mean, this is some piece of good news because recall when the new chief of army staff was um, announced and many, it was of course 37, while there are so many generals, well of course 34, 35, 36. And this fear was that we may have to lose as many as 30 generals. But I was wondering, does it mean if somebody who joined the army before you is um, made the head of the army, then you have to leave? But it's not a law written anywhere, but it has sort of become the tradition. But I'm very happy to hear that that uh, tradition is being jettisoned this time around. Because to head the army, there are many competent generals. It is also a political decision if you will. So the fact that these guys are, because to lose 30 generals from when we are saying we don't have enough uh, manpower within the Nigerian military to deal with the widespread insecurity in the country, I think this is some piece of good news to know that, yes, we joined the army before you, but we are ready to serve under you because you are not the leader. Anybody can be the leader, can be picked. And I insist, more often than not, that is a political decision. <laughs> we know that. Yes. yes. Now, if we just look at other newspapers, the Daily Sun newspaper, beside the masthead, onion dealer suspends supply to southeast. Once it was stopping tomatoes coming to the southwest, some persons are using food as a weapon of war. And I think this will not sync well with uh, the southeast. Uh, because having been, they are, they are 
their minds haven't been um, taken to the civil war. And um, now somebody somewhere is saying onion dealers will, not, will suspend supply of onions to the southeast. Recall that they also don't forget the fact that at one point during the civil war, Blockade of food was also used as a weapon to bring Biafra to its knees. With devastating consequences. With, yes. With all the Kwashoko, children suffered. So uh, the direction we are going under this government, I hope the government will put its acts together. Because some of these things are only polarizing the country further. People not being happy all over the place. Now, Senate, still on the front page of, of Daily Sun, Senate forecloses totally new constitution. Says extant laws not in support. Constitutional conference of speakers seeks amendment on impeachment procedure. Yes, I think I've been one of those who have been asking, who have been asking this question, that those calling for a new constitution or going back to the 1963 constitution. What is the legal procedure to reach there? Because we have an extant constitution. We amend that section. Yes. And that uh, constitution is what this government in power has sworn to uphold. So it's like asking the government to dismantle itself. No, if we amend, I think it's section 9, isn't it's it? Section if nine. we amend section 9, then that opens the door to it's where we ought to be. A brand new constitution. And the big argument with regard to Section 9 is that it should be amended to provide an opportunity for a referendum. Yes. Which is not in that constitution. Yes, that, the that should be there. And that if there is that referendum, then a decision can be taken along the lines of uh, whether, you know, what we truly need is a completely new uh, constitution or not. Will that happen under this administration? One portion of Buhari's speech somehow we have overlooked because of um, the Biafra talk, is that the Civil War talk, is, he mentioned that he is, is, is uh, operating under a constitution and is going to continue to rule under this constitution. It was part of that his speech. It was, and we can all see in the seventh schedule, we can all take a look and remind ourselves what the president actually swore, the oaths are all there. Uh, senators, everybody. So I just find it really curious that he's so wedded to the Constitution at certain times and not so much at other times. And in any case, the uh, president of Nigeria has no powers to take over the legislative process. So if the uh, parliament and the people say we want to go in this direction, yes, whatever he may have sworn to, the will of the people. This is part of the issue. Supreme. This is but, what the Constitution says. The Constitution the also talks about unity and harmony, a level playing field for all Nigerians. Is that what we've observed? Well, the Senate president once said, anything that comes from the president will go through the Senate, including, I want to add, body language of the president. The Senate president too should also look at the doctrine of separation of powers and refresh his, himself anyway, on that. Fede, let's take a quick uh, commercial break and then we'll come back and the review of newspapers from around the world will continue with Emmanuel Effect. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News channel. Arise News analyst Emmanuel Efene is still here reviewing top stories in today's newspapers from around the world. Emmanuel Efene. Yes, let's look at Vanguard newspaper. The lead story. We can't give Nigeria a new constitution. Seen it, that we just reviewed, but above the mass air. NDDC board, militants vow no retreat, no surrender, as Akpabio meets Tompolo. Well, the issues, these uh, militants, whether active or retired militants, are asking for the reconstitution of the NDDC board. We've had um, the sole administrator or interim chairman. We had Nune there. We had the professor. And now there is uh, somebody there. And we know what happened in Nune, the professor. And um, these militants are saying, why don't you put in place a proper board 
so that the states will be properly represented because the extant law establishing the NDDC makes provision for this. Section 2 of the NDDC yes. Establishment Act. So this issue of we are doing forensic audits and as such there will be no board. I don't know where that is coming from because the president have nominated persons, sent their names to the Senate. They, they were screened and approved only for him to uh, renege, as it were, in swearing them in. I don't think there's any justification for the continued uh, operation of the M N NDDC with a sole administrator, as it were. And what these guys are saying is that the minister is uh, from uh, one state, the solar is from the same state. Other states are supposed to be represented and their interests taken care of. And um, I hope they don't allow this to degenerate into another round of uh, shutting of oil facilities. And um, I believe their request <laughs> is not a difficult one. It's really not. Because and the, it's the lawful one. Because the, the, the president had already nominated persons. They have been cleared by the Senate. It's only to inaugurate them that we are talking about. Of course, if he wants to change his mind and appoint new persons, well, it's within his, uh, his powers to do so. But we, there should be a board. Well, just by way of providing the other side, you recall that we had on this same program, Edanx Eradiri. Uh, former president of the Ijo Youth Council, currently uh, a special assistant to the sole administrator of the NDDC. And he said that what is uh, responsible for this delay is the fact that there's an ongoing forensic audit. Yes. And that, you know, it's within the uh, powers of the president to carry out that forensic audit and until that is concluded, before he would then decide to... Uh, you know, set up the According board. to which law? But the issue, of course, <laughs> is that the uh, Ijo Youth Council had served notice of uh, a protest, uh, but then they decided to suspend it. And after that, we had the government of uh, Mupolo, popularly known as uh, Tumpolo, you know, uh, General Tumpolo, coming forward to give another seven-day uh, notice. And all of these, uh, you know, uh, interested stakeholders are holding the Minister of Niger Data Affairs personally responsible uh, for the delay with the composition of the, uh, of, the, of the substantive board for the Niger Data Development Commission. However, the basic unresolved issues is how a development agency ended up becoming a, a political uh, unit and how the NDDC has not been able to achieve its objectives. Instead, the dominant narrative coming from there is that of a corruption and mismanagement and failure of leadership you know, with uh, all kinds of uh, fainting spells uh, by some of the uh, persons who have been in charge and slapping, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> theater, uh, displays, histrionics uh, by uh, some of the people who have been involved. And at the end of the day, the people who are shortchanged are the people of the Niger Delta yeah. who have been given the short end of the stick because they are not seeing the development that uh, that particular development agency supposed to provide. Yes, one thing the, that former Ijo Youth Council said was that NMB, NDDC has been used as a place for political settlements by both APC and PDP in the past. And if you don't put in place a proper board, then anybody you are just nominate, nominating to go and run the place, it's like you are giving the same mandate. Go and Enjoy yeah, but the question is, even when you have a new board, beyond the law, that is, you know, uh, would they be able to make any difference? Or is it that what we're facing is an attempt by some people to have their people in the place? Because part of the complaint of the, uh, the Joy Youths is that, well, if there is no board in place, the youths of, from the area will not be empowered. <laughs> and I was asking Ed and Zeradiri, okay, this empowerment that you all talk about, so is it about sharing money? or being part of the development agenda of that particular agency. So the questions, you know, you really don't know what yes, specific we, motives are. We need to run that place properly so that the NDC can deliver on its mandate, developing the Niger Delta. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, residents relocate as bandits terrorize Abuja suburbs. Over 80 kidnapped in five months. I was abducted twice. My brother once near Abaji. 
property developers have vacated agents. Veritas Varsity in FCT suspends resumption indefinitely. I won't blame them for taking that decision. Now, the foreign newspapers, we look at the foreign newspapers quickly. The Times of London. Britons rush to cancel holidays in travel chaos. Hopes fade for summer trips as Portugal removed from green list. Yes, Port Portugal is now amber. So those uh, UK citizens who are traveling there know that they will come and isolate at their own expense. And um, that is not funny. Many are canceling their, their holiday, which they've already booked. But one story in front page of the Times of London, which we must also look at, World Cup host funneled millions of dollars to terrorists, talking of Qatar. Now, the, the Qatari state had been accused of playing a central role you know, in funneling hundreds of uh, millions of dollars to jihadist groups in Syria. I will not be surprised if such money find their way to ISWAP, that is part of uh, af an affiliate of uh, the terrorists in Syria. Now, according to a court paper, because nine Syrians are suing uh, these Qataris, and there are two Qatari banks are involved, several charity organizations, businessmen, senior politicians, and civil servants are among the defendants in a claim of, uh, by, by these uh, nine Syrians who are claiming damages from uh, so that matter is in the British court, in the London court. Now, if we look at the Washington Post newspaper, Biden, hunt, Biden hints at a tax concession. Corporate rate hike could be off the table. President seeks to revive um, terms of infrastructure, tenor of in, infrastructure talks. Now, in a private meeting, President Biden is saying, well, it's open to... Um, reviewing the size, significant the size of his infrastructure package and how it will be funded. You know, he was talking about taxing the big corporations, but again, he's ready to review all that in order to get the support of the Republicans. Real politics now weighing in and because he needs to carry uh, these Republicans. Well, that's really what he was elected for, to be that kind of bridge builder. So that's not a surprise. I have to talk about the World Cup. I don't understand how Qatar got the hosting rights. Because you'll recall, right from the beginning, it's been plagued with these accusations of human rights abuses. So this is hardly surprising. This was a mistake. Well, I recall that uh, many were of the view that the trouble Sir Blatter and other FIFA officials got into was uh, as a result of this uh, Qatar. Yes, it's been scandal-plagued yes, from the scandal beginning. Plague. And look at this, the country that allows its system to funnel millions of dollars to terrorists who kill and maim Awful. around the world. Well, Okay, the proposal by the U.S. government, you know, uh, to increase corporate tax uh, to between, there is a minimum of 15% to about 25%. Yes, it's one of the major issues that Congress will have to consider. And it's very difficult to forge a bipartisan, you know, uh, option, approach, consensus on the matter, particularly with the Republicans saying that, look, the infrastructure fund in particular being proposed by President Biden uh, is just wasteful and does not make sense. However, earlier on, we discussed with uh, Michael Wilson how the uh, finance ministers of the G7 are meeting today, tomorrow, in London, to be able to seek a consensus on that. But the global deal uh, that the U.S. proposed, that is now being considered, let's see what comes out of the G7 meeting. Uh, in uh, July, you have the G20 meeting. And there is, you know, where we will know what eventually, what range is eventually decided upon. But of course, there are countries who are kicking, like Ireland. Ireland has never supported it because they thought it will result in a loss of revenue uh, for Ireland. But quickly, let me go back to this day. The front page story yes. about President Obasi just saying Nigeria has become a land of uh, bitterness and sadness. Well, isn't that what we experienced on this program this morning when we were interviewing parents, teachers who have had children of uh, between the ages of 2 and 15 under their watch 
uh, the world, you know, uh, and, you know, being uh, abducted. And Taking days, it to the forest. Yes, and days later, six days later, nobody has heard from any government. Nobody has heard from uh, any local government. The man was even saying, Idris Uma, the owner of the school, was even saying that they don't have access to influential people. So what can be more bitter than that? You know, what sadness can be worse than that? So President uh, Obasanjo is, uh, is right. He was speaking at the occasion of a book launch. And then again, there was this story in the uh, Foreign Affairs magazine, published by the U.S. Council on Foreign Policy, which says Nigeria is a failing state. The giant of Africa is failing. And I see government official spokespersons have been uh, developing hypertension over that. Okay, how successful is Nigeria? A country where even two-year-olds and four-year-olds cannot feel safe. Where unemployment rate is 33.3%. Where food inflation is about 18.7%. How successful is such a country? Maybe they don't like the phrase feeling. Maybe fragile could be more uh, convenient. But whatever it is, the country is not working. And government needs to stand up for the people, their security, their welfare, so that you know, foreign media will not say we are failing or we are in retreat. The primary uh, purpose of government, protection of uh, lives and property. Thank you very much, Emmanuel O'Fanning.